some background why I got into what I'm doing. Um, I started in EMS back in the 80s as a medic, loved taking care of patients. That's where my passion was at. I would rather be in the field than do almost anything. Um, as I got into more leadership stuff, I started growing where I really enjoyed technology. Um, and in the 19, late 1990s, I uh, started a software company that built software for anything by EMS, government, uh, financial institutions, and all those types of things. And so, for the course of about five or six years, we were building software and technologies before the dot com bust happened. In, uh, I think it was 2000, 2001. Um, it never dawned on us that we should start building technology for running the ambulance. So we started slowly building applications for EMS. And it really wasn't until um, I got introduced to Tim and Pride Care and um, Catalyst Group. And I started to network with some of the folks inside Catalyst that I realized some of the stuff that we had been building for four or five years in the infrastructure with the software that we had for EMS, I just assumed everyone had it. We were a fairly small company in Michigan, and I just assumed everybody had this technology. And what we learned, uh-oh. <laughs> I make you nervous? <laughs> uh, what I learned was is, uh, there was a big need. There was not this integration that I assumed that there was in, in, uh, in technology and software and the applications we were using. So the other piece was is that we were getting frustrated with the current solution that we were using in CAD and billing and trying to connect all these other web-based applications that we had built for other industries, forms, scheduling. We couldn't really get it to fit. So we decided, you know what, like we can, let's just Let's focus on EMS. Let's really concentrate on the area that I love the most, which is pre-hospital care and technology, and bring them together, and try to build a product that really solves some of our problems. Um, sorry, this thing's getting this paper made. So um, it was through the collaboration with the Catalyst Group and the technology and putting all these pieces together that we really had a few years ago the aha moment that there really is a need, and there really wasn't anyone that was putting all of this stuff together. So, as we move through these slides, we're going to talk about where we've come, and where we're at, and where we are going. Um, and they added this slide for me, uh, the late Steve Jobs. The design is not what it looks like, but what it actually does, how it helps us as we move forward. To do that, let's just real quick take a trip through memory lane. How many of you guys remember the old bag cell phones? And the brick? And we thought we were the coolest guys in the world because we had one, right? Um, and we could actually be driving down the road and talking on the phone. We didn't have to get back to the office. And then we had the pagers, and we thought, oh my gosh. Now we can really interact with everyone because we got these pagers. How cool are we? Um, that wasn't that long ago. Um, my kids right now are, the peer pressure, they don't have an iPhone, you know, fifth, sixth grade, and they're not texting and communicating. Um, that wasn't that long ago. Technology is really, really moving fast. Um, my parents, email, when that first came out, they said, are you kidding? Like, email. Just recently, my dad, I've never used texting. Now they've got iPhones and they text me more than anyone. <laughs> right? And think about the generation that we have right now of kids. The texting is nonstop, right? It's just, it's crazy. So um, this is important as we relate the technology that's out there and where we are as an EMS <coughs> entity and how we're going to manage folks moving forward, you know, the next generation and, and the years to come. And this stuff is moving pretty, pretty fast. I mean, just take retail and shopping. How long ago was it that it was, people said, I'll never shop online, right? It's not safe. It's not secure. I'd rather go to the store. Shoot, I'll tell you in Michigan, when you got three feet of snow on the ground and it's winter, you can just jump online and do your order in the middle of the night and get all your Christmas shopping done. We did almost all of our shopping this year online. We have to think about that as we're moving forward with EMF, uh, EMS management tools and some of the stuff that's out there and where this stuff is going. The other cool thing, I forgot my phone. You guys, does anybody ever have the new Apple 4 with Siri? It's crazy. Crazy where we're going. 
the voice recognition, although she can get a little frustrating, and if you talk to her, she can have an attitude. <laughs> so how does this relate to EMS, and how does this relate to what we're doing, and how do we make, how do we apply this stuff to managing companies? We need to real quick take a look at how things are now, and how things are going to be, and what we're doing in the future. And I think for some of us, at least some of the things that I've kind of discovered as I've networked with some of you folks, part of this is a paradigm shift in your mind. And it's difficult because we're used to doing things a certain way. And things are changing, whether you like it or not. eBay is really going to be around. Amazon's going to, we're going to buy stuff online. So think about real quick, think about your IT budgets, what you guys are paying or what we're paying uh, for IT. How many servers do we have in a house? What are we paying Microsoft for licensing fees? How often does the server licenses change? You know, server 2008, now you have to have 2010. You upgrade your software, you gotta upgrade your servers, right? It's constantly changing. Um, licensing fees, the MS, uh, uh, SMA fees, not to mention the solutions don't really fit together. How many have an AP program or an AR program that connects directly to your county? Anyone? It doesn't exist, right? How many solutions do you have that they all fit together and you can really produce real-time information? Anyone? It doesn't exist. It's going to real soon. That's the exciting part. That's the part that keeps me up at night. We're close. It's coming. Budgets are big, whether you have an internal IT department like Mike, everyone, or you outsource it like we do, and you bring in outside hardware people to manage your networks and things like that. Um, keep in mind, I'll bring this back around to sort of the whole Microsoft licensing thing um, and enterprise solutions. Do most of you guys know the difference between enterprise software and web-based software and software as a service? Enter enterprise software is more of the traditional stuff. You load it on a server. You pay people to manage it, blah, blah, blah. And then software as a service, you pay a as you go type of fee, it's connected on the internet, and you kind of just go. Okay? So that's the old way. That's the bag phone. That's, I'm not going to text. The new stuff that's coming um, is software as a service. It's, you're not going to have product on your servers back at home. You're going to, uh, you're going to pay for or buy services that are on the fly that are hosted over a network. Okay? So it's called cloud computing. I remember a couple of years ago we had a meeting, uh, almost to the day, uh, yesterday, the 18th, and we talked about cloud computing a couple of years ago that it was coming. Um, so the new system is remote servers. You've heard of server farms, right? You pay folks to, uh, or you pay for access to these servers. The advantages of doing that is you have, you pay for what you need. They manage the server licenses. They have 24 hour support, technicians and engineers there that are there to make sure this stuff stays up and running. So the reliability is as good or better than what you have now. You have access to it wherever, 24 seven. Um, as many of you know, web-based applications are starting to come into the marketplace. There's what, a couple dozen uh, EPCR companies. There's several fleet, uh, a variety of training, uh, web-based training software applications that are out there. Um, and they're trying to put stuff together, but there's nobody really that's providing one solution yet. Okay? Remember I told you about the Microsoft thing? How many of us use Microsoft Office products? Like the majority. Okay. You, you guys know that Google offers almost everything that Microsoft provides as far as productivity for free. It doesn't cost a penny. Email, word processing, Excel spreadsheets, you name it. It's available to you right now. Um, so just keep that in mind. And it's free. Most of the web-based applications are um, pay-as-you-go or less expensive. Okay, so am 
I talk really fast for them? Um, what's the value to us as EMS? The value to us is that this is the most exciting time for us because all of the things that we need to run our operations, how we connect with our staff, how we gather information, um, how we pull inventory, how we connect with uh, not only the um, you know, internal with our employees and communication tools um, and vehicle checks and inventory and crew scheduling and CAD and um, all of those things, but it's also how we connect to the external environment and how we take those tools and produce revenue generating opportunities like Mike talked about with ITS. Um, when you take those components and you put those things together where we can uh, put it under one umbrella, if you will. Um, you increase productivity because it's access to um, you know, new business opportunities. And the reality, the reality is, is that the rest of the people around us are already kind of going to these types of things. Um, if we don't start embracing this stuff, um, I think we're going to get past by. Um, and the cool thing is, is that we need this information. How many of us get frustrated you know, with checkoff sheets. I'm sure no one does this. Yeah, I just heard of this. I, I have no personal knowledge of it. But let's say checkoff sheets, where you go through. Did anyone ever go through and just go, yeah, it's all there. Let's turn it into management. Anybody know of any crews that may have done certain things like that? Sure. Think about a system where you can track that stuff, like with Redline, as we're pulling the data in and we're placing our order with McKesson, and then we track that order when it comes to the door. We know where it goes when it gets put on the truck. We know through the EPCR when we use it, and then we can tie all that stuff back together and then dump it into an accounting package. Think about billing, being able to take our billing and actually put it into an accounting package so that we can keep track of and know what we're actually doing on a day-to-day -day basis. What's going on, Mike? Very excited. <laughs> what part? The accounting part. Oh, the accounting part. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure we're, yeah, everybody's struggling with that. We have to get there. We have to do these things. Um, the important thing is, is you have to keep in mind is this stuff is as secure, as reliable, um, and it's more efficient. You have access to it anywhere. Most of this stuff you can access from your phone or an iPad now. So uh, this stuff is coming. I mean, the stuff that Jason talked about, um, we're just scratching the surface, guys. The toolbox type of stuff that we've been talking about, crew scheduling and human resources and EPCR that are already in the marketplace right now, um, we're going so far behind or beyond that. There's more things that are coming out on how you connect with you know, the iPhone or how you tie inventory in with RFID tagging. <coughs> And as the technology changes, it allows us to build these applications unlike you were able to do 15, 20 years ago. So the opportunity is just, it's crazy. Um, I am talking very fast, aren't I? You're doing great, though. So um, I'm talking faster, faster than Jason did. <laughs> I get really excited about this stuff. Um, I could talk for hours on all these different applications and how they integrate and, and how they're going to help our businesses and, and connect with our employees and do these things. Um, I think the biggest part for us, though, as is, is managers and leaders in EMS is that we have to start get our, getting our mind wrapped around that some of these things in the change, that we need to make these changes. Um, when you ask the average guy, we're going to pull your servers up, What's your initial reaction? Usually people say, yeah, you start sweating and go, oh my gosh, are you kidding? Um, so I think, and, and the other thing is, is that you need to start somewhere. If you haven't started to embrace some of these new technologies, I think it's important to start going down that road of considering these things and looking at these things and, and start the process um, because it's coming. It's like online shopping. Um, you can be resistant to it. You can think that texting won't happen. Um, but it, it's coming. And what we've learned, and, and I think what you folks are starting to learn, and many of you we've already uh, talked with and, and had the opportunity to discuss technology, is that if, if we don't do it, the next guy's going to. 
I mean, it's not, it's almost similar to, how many people, I'm just curious, how many people use a phone book recently? You have, really? <laughs> Think about that question 15 years ago. I mean, we were waiting for the yellow page book to show up, right? So you can look at your ad in there and, you know, who's in there and what order are they in and all that stuff. Think about that now. I haven't used a phone book in 10 years. Now you get to just push your thing on your iPhone and say, Siri, you know, find me X, and everything's right there. It draws a map of where you're going. Why shouldn't we have that technology in EMS helping our crews? It makes no sense to me that I can buy a car, a commercial car, that has more technology than what they're giving us in EMS. That's silly to me. Why hasn't someone done that? And what I'd suggest to you is that there are companies that are going to be doing it. Our company is doing it. Um, and more companies are going to continue to do it because it's easier to build the applications now. The platform is different. Um, the technology is more readily available. Um, and the market's going to demand it. Um, and there's stuff that Mike didn't mention that we haven't talked about yet that um, we can see on the horizon of how we're going to interact with our hospitals, how we're going to interact with um, skilled nursing, um, and, and just the whole, not, whole type of interaction with our uh, consumer is going to be totally different. Um, the products that ITS is developing and the software behind it to help make those things work, um, guys, are going to, it's really, it's going to change our industry. There's no question. Um, having said that, I'm pretty much done. Is there a, I talk so fast. Again, the key is we, the whole goal of the technology is we want to equip all of us, leaders, management, our field staff, our customers, we want to provide the technology so that it provides uh, the information we need to make better decisions. Okay, hopefully there's questions. <laughs> hey, what, Brian, what about, what about the cloud field? And, and uh, if you don't have servers, how, that's going to make people nervous. How, what's the redundancy? What's the backup? What's, what's the fail safe? Yeah, that, actually that's why I asked my partner to be here too. He's uh, got a lot of uh, background and history in that. But um, think of the servers that you have in your in your home office. Think about taking that and, and having it multiple locations spread out through the country. For instance, um, I hope I can do this with permission. Um, you remember the tornadoes that went through Joplin? We were literally on the. We have a customer in Birmingham uh, and Tuscaloosa. We were literally on the phone with them. The, it was a funny story. The, uh, the, the uh, person we were talking to kept getting interrupted. We've got this storm coming. We've got this inter the storm coming. And, uh, and we said, you know, I mean, do you need us to let you go? And she goes, oh, no, it's just normal distractions. It's just EMS. It was so chaotic. And finally, um, Sean and I walked into the room because we heard this stuff going on. And uh, we said, Debbie, it sounds like you got a storm coming. Maybe you need to go check this out. And she said, uh, no, 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 it's fine. And it finally escalated to the point where she got off the phone. And later that night, she sent us a text message of a picture. When she opened her door, there was a Cat 5 coming right at her. Um, she hid underneath the ambulances, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, it knocked out their, uh, some of their systems that were in place. So they called us and said, hey, can you help us out with our crew scheduling? We don't know kind of what's going on. We've lost everything. Um, and we said, sure. We helped them do their part of their dispatching in the morning and their CAD and their scheduling um, until they could get back up and running. Rob had a similar incident in, uh, in New Jersey with the floods, right? Um, you lost your internet or ISP or something, and we were working with Rob because we were still up and running because we've got server farms and that information stored in several places around the country. So it's actually more, it's a long answer, isn't it? It's a, we have more redundancy and more reliability now than what we thought we had by having six blade servers in a back office somewhere. Because now this information is spread out around the country. We've got people that are managing it 24-7, and we're only paying for what we need. So you lose something here, you've got two or three more different systems that you can pull up at any time. Um, so I think it's more reliable. It's more structured. Most Mike, you can probably speak to this, but most Fortune 500 companies, 100 companies, are all going that way. Yeah, yeah, and, and these these hosting companies, they themselves are diversified around the country, different server farms, and they have tight service level agreements. <coughs> 99, how many nines can you count? 
reliability. And how many of our, our uh, uh, networks are protected with security cameras, you know, and all the rules that they have for HIPAA and all the different things? Most of us don't have cameras and security and passcodes and all this stuff. Some of us do, but many of us don't. Our servers are sitting back in a room somewhere, um, and it, people have access to it. These server farms are so secure, so regulated, um, and the performance is, is really tight. Kind of comment to back you up. So what you what the industry is doing with all that? Verizon just bought a company, Terramark, for 2.2 billion uh, to focus on cloud computing. So even the industry is exactly where they're going, and more and more applications are going to continue to go that way. So just look at examples too to back Brian up. It's it's where the industry is going right now. So <laughs> well, it's a commercial. It hit commercial first. I mean, think about how we do music. I mean, music, you just had to go to a CD store, had to find your CD, you had to load it, or 8-track tape, or your cassette. I mean, now, I mean, you literally, there's free sites that you can go and download music, whatever you want, and be playing it within seconds on your phone. It's just that fast. Look at Blockbuster. Look at the example of what Blockbuster did. You know, before, it was, hey, on Friday night, let's go get a movie at Blockbuster. Now, Netflix, Xbox, your Apple TV, you can have immediate gratification just like that. Our consumers, I'm telling, this is just my own opinion, I think our customers are gonna demand that three, five, 10 years down the road. They're gonna want instant access to where the ambulances are, instant access to what we can provide them, instant access to things like trip newer. Well, I thought the problem was with telling us. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I, I think that's where the industry is going. So um, it's an extremely exciting time. Uh, the good news is for all of us, we need these things and they're coming. Um, and so just stay tuned.